Uh, David, so nice of you to come over to the studio. Uh, we hear you have a pitch for us. I got a great idea for a movie! Right, is it this one here you emailed me? I, I have the attachment here. It's called Eight-Legged Freaks! Oh, yes, Eight-Legged Freaks. I see it right here. Now, why are you... Do you have, like, an inner ear thing? Are you okay, David? What did you think of the movie? It it seems like a, a, a solid premise. Why are you yelling? Giant spiders! Yes, yes, I gathered that, David. Giant giant spiders. Could you, could you bring Wrestling's it down? Wrestling's not fake! David, that's not this movie. And uh, there are other people trying to conduct business here. I got confused! Okay, so yeah, no, this this looks like it'd be kind of a, a fun little throwback. Uh, this Leon to you. Rippy! Pardon me? Leon Rippy is going to be on it! Uh, okay, yeah. Carrie Wurrer! Yeah, that's that's good pick. Good pick. I'm David, in what? it! Why are you, I'm yes, in of it! course you're in it. We figured you would be, David. Why are you yelling at us? Doggy Dog! Ooh, Doggy Dog, nice. Right? Yes, very, very much so. Okay, so are we making this movie? Well, absolutely, David. This looks like it could be a lot of fun. And if you could just just keep it down a bit, there are other offices in the building. They're trying to conduct business. It's been a pleasure doing business with you. Thank you. You know when I pick a movie, that's when I'm on to pressure now. The question always comes back to me: What were they thinking now? Hello, everyone. Oh, oh, you've you've made it, cousin Pushti. Hello, Milos. Oh, Pushti, it's so good to have you on the show. And uh, Mr. Brendan and Mr. Nathan have have left the studio open. We can we can talk about uh, that movie our cousin made. I just, with which one is that? A Serbian film. Oh yes, let's go. Oh, by the way, I have to apologize. I don't know why my accent keeps changing. It's. It's okay. I understand you're trying to to avoid detection. Now, this is easily one of the funniest romantic comedies to come out of our homeland in a long time. So great. Lots of great. Uh oh. Uh oh. Someone's coming in. Hey, hey, guys. What are you. Get out, get out of here. Milos. Come on, Jesus. man. Come on. Uh, no, Who's get away from dude? my shoes. Get away from my shoes. Who's Milos's friend? Is that. Oh, it's, it's Cousin Borsti. We were going to talk about great romantic comedy from our homeland. Come on, the Serbian film. It is great. No, oh, get out. No, get out, get out, no, out. no. Get out. Get out. 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 Don't take, don't. Those are our guest shoes. No, leave. Milos, Mil, B- Milos, put them down. Put, the, put, put them down. down. Put them down. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, I think they're gone. Whew. That was, that was a hectic start. I know, right? What uh, you go we go out to get a drink, to, you know, some water for the show. Yeah. We come back and Milos and did he say his name was Borshti? Bo- Borshti? Who names their kid Borshti? Uh, that's a weird name. That's a weird name, man. Oh, <sighs> well, what's your name? My name's Nathan, which is I'm... fairly normal. <laughs> hey, let's not name shame. <laughs> well, okay, Brandon. <laughs> Brandon. And this is what were they thinking? Mm-hmm. This week we are talking about eight legged freaks. Nowhere's near as bad as I remembered it. <laughs> but we did. We're not doing this alone, Nathan. No, we have a first-time guest here on the show, uh, very patiently waiting for his introduction. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from the Real Feels podcast, we have Drew. Live in studio, aka Skype. Welcome. Yay, I'm excited. <laughs> As you should be. Yes. Uh, Drew, before we get going, why don't you tell a little bit, uh, everybody a little bit about yourself and where we can find your wonderful podcast. Yes. So, uh, the Real Feels podcast comes out every other Wednesday on Podbean and iTunes and what we do is we uh, we bring a brand new movie of a, a different genre or subgenre every single time. And uh, we basically go through the movie, talk about our favorite parts, the good, the bad, the worst lines, the best lines, and 
really just get down to the to the feels. <laughs> the real feels, if you will. Well, yeah. Oh, mm, I see what you did there. Hey. And that just to just to uh, to specify for our listeners, that's R E E L. Yes, it's it. Yeah, like a film reel because I I like wordplay. Hey, hey, Who you're doesn't? not alone. <laughs> Nathan, me. Have you met my friend Nathan? <laughs> <laughs> You actually, it's a fun fact, super, super fun, fun fact, because it's a fun, fun fact. Hmm. Um, your co-host is also named Nathan. Yes, yes, my buddy Nathan and I do the show, and uh, actually we're also going to be bringing on our uh, our good friend Jack to join the show as well. Oh, so, uh, there you go. It's a yeah, so it's going to it's gonna become a trio. <laughs> <laughs> Two American kids on a podcast. Do, do, do. Ooh, that, that's catchy. Right? You owe, us like a, that. you owe us a hundred dollars. <laughs> a hundred. <laughs> We're selling it. Well, okay, we'll give it to you since you're a guest now. Ninety. There you go. Ah, well, that's just a steal then. Ten <laughs> percent off, man. There you go. Uh, right off the bat, Nathan, we got to give major props to Drew because I will say uh, a little bit behind the scenes right now, the original choice for this episode was Cool World, and <laughs> I said okay, and, and Drew said uh, maybe Eight Legged Freaks. So I said okay, well. Which one would you prefer? He said, I'm going to go watch both. <laughs> and then I'll let you know. So this guy watched Cool World for nothing. Hey, no, he's a trooper. That's what I mean. He's a trooper. He watched Cool World for nothing just to help us out. It, so, it, um, it, it was an experience. Kudos to you, sir, for getting through <laughs> Cool World and not having any kind of payoff. <laughs> Uh, it, I, it is, uh, it's definitely not as good as I first remembered it. Um, definitely going through it. I, uh, ooh, glad I had something to drink while, go, while going through it. <laughs> Speaking uh, of which, what's everyone drinking tonight, right? Uh, I have coffee. Huh? <laughs> I have I thought, coffee in front of me. Oh. You guys yeah. aren't all both functioning alcoholics like me? Oh. Um, well, see, I think if I had a, a, a sniff of beer, I would probably pass out. <laughs> I am exhausted. Are you fellas drinking something? I, I have a, uh, I have a nice ginger ale in front of me. I, I, I had a bit, you know, heavy drinking last night. I'm, mm. I'm good now. <laughs> uh, ra- raspberry crushing gin. <laughs> Nathan has a full bottle of whiskey in front of him. Whiskey? <laughs> Oh, that should kill me, man. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, we're going to be talking about Eight Legged Freaks, guys. 2002 film uh, directed by first-time director and pr- basically not the last-time director, but the last time he made a theatrical release, uh, Ellery Elkayum, who, <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> who also did uh, a short called Larger Than Life, about spiders invading a suburban house, which basically was uh, gave him the green light for this movie. Um, also produced by uh, classic cinema uh, cinematic genius uh, Dean Devlin, Roland Emmerich's little buddy. Yeah. Um, and, okay, so actually I have it written down here. So Ellery <laughs> Elkham, after this, also did. Uh, this led him to such great films as Return of the Living Dead, Rave to the Grave. Uh, Return Oof. of the Living Dead, Necropolis, and Without a Paddle, Nature's Calling. So, uh, budget $30 million, and it made $45 million at the box office, so it did okay. Got its Not, budget back. Yeah. Yeah, like barely, but, you know, it did alright. Uh, they were gonna make a sequel, and it was cancelled, though, so I'm assuming not enough money to justify it. They're gonna make... I feel they, everything was what? said that needed to be said. <laughs> I feel like it was just yeah, gonna like, be... Yeah, like, what are they gonna... What are they gonna possibly make a sequel out of? There's there's nothing left. The spiders are dead. The, hmm. the, I mean, the, wa- the toxic whoa, waste is gone. Spoiler alert! <laughs> Getting ahead of ourselves. <laughs> um, no, I, I feel like it was just gonna be a different town with giant spiders, probably. Maybe the only connecting tissue would be Dougie Doug. By the way, guys... <laughs> As we start this movie, we need to say Dougie Doug is in this movie. <laughs> yes, he is. Uh, what did you say last time? That darn cat. That darn cat. <laughs> That's a fun movie. <laughs> First thing I want to criticize right off the bat, the title Eight-Legged Freaks 
There's no dash between eight and legged, so it literally is, means eight freaks who are legged. <laughs> like just I mean, eight eight freaks with legs. Right. It's like it's not eight legs on all these freaks. It just happens to be fr- just uh, it's freaks that just happen to have legs. Mm-hmm. Anyway, that being said, eight legged freaks. We open with Dougie Doug. Mm-hmm. Do you know fear? <laughs> Sinister music for every single credit that comes on the screen, mm-hmm. by the way. David Arquette's name comes up and is like, oh. <laughs> As if he's like the Candyman or something. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Dougie Doug. Uh, by the way, this takes place in Prosperity, Arizona. I don't know if that's a real town. I don't think, I don't think it is. In the quiet mining town of Prosperity, Arizona. Fact check. Fact check. Prosperity, Arizona is the name of a fictional town. Ta- no, it is nope, not real. doesn't exist. There you go. <laughs> doesn't exist. Glad we, glad we took the time to clear that up. Clear that one up. Yep. Well, I think right off the bat, yes, we open with Dougie Doug, who works for Freedom Radio, which is a trailer with a giant satellite dish sticking out of it. <laughs> and, like, my question right off the bat is... Um, he probably doesn't want people to know where he broadcasts from, right? Because we get right uh, the sense right off the bat that he's kind of a conspiracy nut. He's a bit of a right. conspiracy nut, yeah. So I'm thinking that a trailer with a giant satellite dish may give away your position. That's... Here's the thing. He's, he's also, like, up in the hills. Yeah. This is true. There's also the fact that like, I feel that most conspiracy nuts... <sighs> only kind of like half believe the conspiracies they're toting just because they're saying it because they they want to seem interesting which is somewhat proven later in the movie Mm -hmm. um why is why is everyone in town listening to this radio station though nothing else to listen apparently there's nothing else (laughs) like that is yeah he has to be the only radio station in town because literally well there's a later development that is f- bonkers insane regarding that, but so, so apparently he like like nothing else can get in, but so he's got to be the only thing that is there, which is crazy. That means they're not getting news, they're not getting music. It's literally just Dougie Doug being like, "I don't want aliens up my butthole." They they get <laughs> they get internet and they get television. Because I'm get because they come through cable, but the, but no cell phone. Yeah, over the no air radio. and cell phone stuff won't go because of the canyons that they're in. Two thousand two right. internet. Let's not forget. Hmm. <laughs> um. Did you guys know? So he's talking about you know, he's talking about conspiracy theories right off the bat. We get a sense his show is a little loony. Did you guys get that he kind of said that L. Ron Hubbard was spreading the truth? No. He said that like L. Ron Hubbard did is was doing okay for himself. Exactly. Well, well, the way he says it though, he's like, you know, there's no money in spreading the truth. Like Mother Teresa, Gandhi, L. Ron Hubbard. Well, he did okay for himself, but he said it as a way to say like L. Ron Hubbard was spreading the truth. <laughs> was it truth spreading? Oh, was it a was it a slight Scientology little I little think promo? So. Oh, I didn't catch oh, that. Dougie Doug That's... Scientology. <laughs> Uh, we need to find out if... Maybe maybe that's why Ellery Elkayum is not directing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we meet the scariest character in the movie, which is Tom Noonan, <laughs> playing Joshua. <laughs> a, uh, a, a spider... No, he, he's got, like, that, uh, that, that spider farm, which, I again, like, I don't know how he's possibly making a great deal of money, because it seems like the boy is the only one who comes up there. A toxic spider farm. What? <laughs> Yeah, he is, who, yeah. Who else thought he was going to eat that cricket when he when he when he pulled it out of the water? He's looking at it so lovingly, like, "Oh yes, you'll do." Yeah, <laughs> he's such a creep. It's great. Yeah, and this is the thing too, um, Nathan. I think you mentioned this before. When you watch a movie at a certain age, you think a certain way about a character. Like, oh yeah, I like uh, this guy's. This guy's got like creepy spiders. Like he's kind of cool. This mm-hmm. kid wants to hang out with him. Obviously, that's awesome. You want to see all the spiders. As you get older and, and become an adult, you start to say, you know what? I'm kind of on the mom's side. I don't think this kid should be hanging out with this creepy spider guy. True. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's what I want to say right now. He is a scary person. And he gives, like, weird little lines, like, it's like, oh, you know, they, they wrap all their gifts and they bring them to the, to the female, because, you know, all women like breakfast in bed. And then, <laughs> yeah. it's like, quit, quit touching the boy. <laughs> I think it would be great if they, the kid would be like, chicks, am I right? <laughs> he's like, he's like, gotta hit that G spot, right, kid? He's like, what? <laughs> I'm you know, you know Joshua would like elbow him, and be all like, "Yeah, girls." You know what I'm saying? And the kids be all like, "I'm 11," and Josh is gonna go, "Yeah." <laughs> I've never held a, a girl's flop, hand. sweaty. <laughs> it's yeah. like I, I I I went to the prom with my cousin. <laughs> well, and like when this kid goes to the spider farm owned by Tom Noonan, aka Scary Joshua. He greets him in the creepiest way ever because the kid just like hears the noise, backs up, and he puts his hands over his eyes and then kind of lets him turn around. He's like, hey. (laughs) It's just, it's like that like friendly little like, guess who? (laughs) It's like every priest that comes up behind you, like, confession. Arguably (laughs) scarier than any spider in this movie. But he also has a parrot that uh, hilariously quotes the sixth sense. <laughs> yes. Which in 2002, I think, was even played out. Because that movie came out three years before this. Yeah, but I mean, a good cliche, right? Takes a lot longer to die. Um, Drew, you said, you mentioned something about how this guy, you don't know how this guy really makes his money. He also says... The spiders are getting bigger because as... Oh, I guess we should note that there was a uh, toc- toxic waste dump in the lake uh, that we see earlier on in the movie. But it's making the spiders bigger. And he says, I'm going to I'm gonna make a fortune. How? Well, right. He's kind of really... He kind of reveals that he's a bit of a, a smuggler. Yeah. Right. He said that he had to, like, bribe every customs agent from, like, here to South America. Yeah. To to get the um, the orb weaver spiders right. in, and so I mean obviously he has to make some type of money. So un- I mean he, I guess he could be extracting the venom from the spiders and selling you know the venom to labs or medical you know pharmaceutical companies possibly. But oh, I like to think he's selling them to fetish sites. <laughs> <laughs> As soon as uh, Mike leaves, oh yeah, the kid is named Mike, who by the way, I fucking hate this kid. I'm just going to say it right now. Not a fan. (laughs) Not a fan. He's super intelligent. Mm. Boy genius. Will Robinson, if you will. He's he's smart based on purely spiders. Like, that's what he's he's smart on. Yeah. Sometimes it pays to specialize. (laughs) But he... It uh, might. It might. You can end up like Joshua. Right. (laughs) Is that Mike's future? <laughs> you know he would take it over. I want to see his, his bedroom. His bedroom's already plastered with like spider posters, and he has his little like height diagram to like see how monstrous spiders could grow. It's weird computer <laughs> software that is specifically designed for spider size increase. Yeah. Oh, hey, you know what? This was right or, right at the time when. Hollywood was was going nuts with computers equal magic. I mean, even <laughs> it was worse than it is now. Yeah, this is some real uh some real criminal levels of uh computer exciting computer scenes. Mm. <laughs> but <clears throat> as Mike leaves, Joshua is attacked by one of his little spiders. Mm-hmm. He is bitten and mauled, and his parrot is also killed. Yep. <laughs> In the middle of his sixth sense quote, of course. Of course. Yeah, right. <laughs> because you have to hit that, that point another one more time to get the laughs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, so like, the spiders have been growing bigger and bigger based on him uh, saying that, oh, they've been eating these crickets, and it's like spider steroids. Right. They've been getting bigger and bigger. So, obviously, like it's the crickets that he's finding in the water, but he has, like, an entire container full. So, is he going out every morning and meticulously, like finding the crickets specifically also these co- so these cops so we meet the the officers two, two of them two of them only two of them two of them you. in the entire town seemingly <laughs> uh carrie however you pronounce her fucking name 
<laughs> Actually, uh, fun fact, she was in la- uh, last movie as well that we did. Yes. I don't remember who she played, but she was in it. Um, but, but yeah, her and Pete is the other guy. And they, they find the toxic waste. They're, they note that it's been a few weeks since it was dumped there. So, mm-hmm. number one, why are they only finding it now? I guess because there's two cops in the entire town. And number two, so Joshua was just going here. He would have seen the toxic waste and not reported it. <laughs> You would think so. You would think so. Right? You're like, well, I guess I better better strike while the iron's hot. <laughs> <laughs> Do we get a call from Joshua again? Yeah, somebody somebody apparently broke in and beat him half to death. He he would like to have a restraining order put on some guy. Oh, okay, we'll get to it later. I have to go home. <laughs> My wife wants me to fix the fix the living room. Oh yeah. Mind you, mind you, the cops go home at night. So apparently no one's on duty <laughs> throughout the evening. Right? I don't think there's any other cops in this movie except for ones that are not from that town. Well, no, they, yeah, again, it's, it's only sheriffs, these two. right? So yeah. Sheriff No, 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 she's she's the sheriff, he's the deputy. <laughs> deputy Pete, Deputy Pete, who is cartoonishly stupid. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Can you can you help put his bike in the back? What? Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> to an alarming degree. Like, I feel like Sheriff, the Sheriff is doing everything because he is too dumb. He's too after dumb he, to live in this movie. After he wipes his head with the glove that he used to manhandle the uh, the barrel of toxic waste oh, yeah. out of the, out of the uh, pond, he, like, wipes his head and he's like, oh, oh, crap, I did it. And he smells it and then he touches his head again. <laughs> Uh, but the sheriff is also Mike's mother, mm-hmm. and uh, they, you know, they, they, uh, he, he comes by and they, she takes him home, and I think this is where we meet future star Scarlett Johansson mm-hmm. with dirt bikes. <laughs> dirt bikes are super cool. Well, they are <laughs> super rad. Hey, see what you did there. <laughs> Uh, so there's a bunch of dirt bikes. They speed past the sheriff. One of them is Scarlett. One of the dirt people on the dirt bikes is Scarlett Johansson, who is like I think like 17 in this movie. She's uh, she's like 17, 18. Yeah, yeah. yeah she's quite young. Quite young. So is it weird that I said she, that I thought she was attractive? No. Okay. No. <laughs> um, and she basically tells Scarlett Johansson, "Come on, we're going home." Uh. We find out that one of the other, the dirt biker, that uh, dirt biker, <laughs> that, just, <laughs> that sounds like something else. Uh, one of the dirt bikers, the guy that's into Scarlet, his dad is like the mayor. Everybody's mm-hmm. connected his, in some his way. His stepdad. Stepdad is the mayor. Um, and yeah, she, she takes Scarlet home. By the way, Scarlet Johansson was wearing a helmet. I don't think she was being that reckless. No, but, you know, they're uncouth ne'er-do-well youth, so... And they, and they they had complete like an utter lack of care for like pulling dangerous stunts in front of the sheriff. Oh yeah, like full 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 view. Totally. It's like an open road. Well, no one for miles. One of them even <laughs> mentions when they when she gives them a ticket. Don't you have someone who can like take care of that for you? Yeah, like your dad's the mayor and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And she's like she's like go give him that ticket and you know. You can know how much that little, how little that means to me. Yeah. Um, so from there, she takes them home. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just wrote down because uh, they have Scar- Scarlett Johansson's on the on the phone, like on the home phone. I was like, what is that big weird cell phone they're using? <laughs> <laughs> hey kids, there used to be this thing called landlines. Yes, and they were also known as home phones. The, the kid is trying to get in contact with Joshua because he had found, um, oh gosh, what he had, he found, he had found the toxic waste, the, the toxic waste, and he wanted to warn Joshua. He was like, he's got to know, this is why the spiders are, like, growing big. Yeah, I gotta warn Joshua. <laughs> to which later he, he, uh, this is much later, but I remember he, he's talking to David Arquette, uh, the star of the film, and he says, like, <laughs> he says very casually... Yeah, I think Joshua might be dead. Like, <laughs> <laughs> see, it's it's funny because he goes about it like very scientifically, and actually, like, 
in all reality of the entire film, like, he does stay pretty calm. Right. So, I mean, like, I mean, like, as, as gentle and PC as I can possibly say it, like, I mean, with a slight case of, like, autism, you know, I mean, <laughs> it, it could be the case that this is why he's so focused. <laughs> well, I mean, he does seem... He's almost like a, a, a sociopath in his emotional responses to everything. <laughs> Josh was dead. I'm, I'm, I'm going to now uh, take control of the spider army. Yeah. <laughs> so. Oh, wouldn't that have been a great twist? <laughs> As he rides in on the queen. <laughs> Attack my pretties. <laughs> oh, but... No one believed me. You all didn't believe me. <laughs> and now you suffer. Um, but eventually we, you know, gotta, gotta batter down and get, uh, David Arquette in this town here. Yes. And Former he, WCW heavyweight champion, David Arquette. Yeah. He shows up and he's driving his truck and listening to the most 90s song in the 90s. <laughs> Even though it's, this came out in like 2002, 2001. Yeah. 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 It very well could have been filmed, uh, quite a bit before this and then just held over for a while. Yeah. We also find out that his aunt sucks at family. Yeah. Is his aunt? Gladys? Yeah. Gladys. Yeah, Gladys. Gladys. She doesn't recognize him, but then again, she has like a three foot cloud of nicotine this hovering is over true. her office space. She does a lot of smoking. <laughs> it's, it's like the, the mind's going under, dear. Go away. I, I It's one of those David, situations is where. that you? <laughs> <laughs> is that so wrong I just I, want to smoke cigarettes is that so wrong it's one of the situations where I wish Selma Diamond from Night Court was still alive because she would have been perfect in that role <laughs> I mean it, it's interesting to see that this is the aunt who is saying like oh the mind's going under when in reality that only leaves to tell you that she has been left in charge of the mind <laughs> yep <laughs> I mean, she's she's the one who's sitting there going like, "Do we have any ore? No. Can you pay your bills? No. Thanks for calling. <laughs> Excuse me, I have to go smoke. <laughs> I'll keep the mines open in one condition. You got a cigarette? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I got a note here that we oh they go back to oh no, there's a scene where. We're at Scar Joe's place, and I just have a note. Gross. She likes Lincoln Park. <laughs> All right. <laughs> only note I have from that scene, because my next scene is about Mayor Dickweed here. Oh, yeah. And how well, he's the bad guy from Cuffs. Well, let's... <laughs> oh, played by uh, Leon Rippey. Yeah, the yeah. dude who was the the doctor in Universal Soldier. But, uh, yeah, so yeah, Sheriff Dickweed... Um, it's not such Sheriff Dickweed. Mayor Dickweed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. My bad, guys. As Nathan said, Mayor Dickweed. Mayor Dickweed. That's right. You got elected. It's called a, a landowner's meeting. Yeah, see, Dickweeds can get elected everywhere, guys. <laughs> <laughs> even, just... in, even in fictional towns. Yeah. <laughs> not just entire countries, also fictional towns. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he's doing this big landowner's meeting, and I, I got... What I get from that scene is he's telling everyone he wants to sell the entire town? Is that what it was? And, like, move the entire town to another place? Something like that. Not even, not even like, move the entire town. It's that this company wants to buy every single bit of property. <laughs> right. Because but, but, the mines run underneath the entirety of the town. But only if everyone sells. Right. So it's not like, hey, we'll relocate everybody so no one loses, like, their family connections the business that you know that can still be running for fifty, you know, some odd years. We just relocated. Like, no, they want everybody and pay them. And apparently, like, good luck to you. <laughs> yeah. So we get David Arquette, who just like dramatically interrupts with like, my father owned the mines ten years ago. I'm back, and I want to keep the mines open. And blah 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 blah. There's there's methane gas, <laughs> and it turns out yes. that David Arquette is the pickaxe killer. <laughs> I thought about that too from my bloody Valentine. Yeah. <laughs> this ties in with that movie. 
That makes so much sense. This is why he's been on the run for 10 years. That's right. <laughs> Where have you been? Murdering people. I've actually been in the mines. No one just came to look. Excellent casting of an older Jensen Ackles, guys. There you go. <laughs> David Arquette. <laughs> It's interesting because even if he's gone for 10 years, it seems like nobody in the town recognizes him. Gladys, his own family, doesn't recognize him. And then suddenly from the shadows, like, there's methane gas in the mines. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. This is a landowner's meeting. I am a landowner. Right. Dick. It's only <laughs> reconstructive <laughs> surgery. <laughs> if, but if we're going with the theory that the movie presents, it's only been 10 years. Yeah. Like, it really hasn't been right. that long. It's not like he's a 25-year-old man. Man, I still have people who recognize me that I, like, went to high school with. Right. That I haven't seen since high school. So, right. I think he's, like, like David Arquette's actual age. He's about 30, 31 at the time. So hmm. that would be, that would mean he wouldn't have been, in, he would have been in town last when he was, like, 21. He, like, I don't think he aged a whole lot. No. No. No, no, no. Not to the point where, like, no one's going to recognize him. <laughs> but like I've seen the opposite too where people come into town they look completely different everyone's like oh hey it's him like what? right how do you know? Right. <laughs> but yeah he, let's he head wants... over to Pete and Emma's place yes cause... so Pete the, uh. the dumb as dirt deputy from earlier <laughs> uh, I, what is he trying to like re, re- like fix the he's, walls or something he's like redoing the the living room mm. and like the kitchen area and and obviously it's like supposed to be for the wife it's like oh she wanted it done you clearly want it done and i told you like i'll be a man about it i'll do it myself and she obviously helps nothing yeah nothing. they've got a real <laughs> passive aggressive thing going on <laughs> uh and they've got a cat <laughs> <laughs> um, the great the greatest comical scene, probably, yes. in the entire thing. Well, and, like, <laughs> uh, see, usually I do... I mean, there's there's other good parts, but... <laughs> usually I do get a few clips for these episodes. I didn't get any this time just because we were so rushed on time. But the sounds that the spiders make in this movie are insane. Oh, Frank, Frank Welker. <laughs> yeah. Frank Welker does the sounds. It's fantastic. It's, it's, half, it's half of the greatness of this film where... You can't take the spiders too seriously because they do little sounds, especially like when they're in the mines and they're they're chasing the guy on the dirt bike. And it's like, <laughs> it almost sounds like the spiders almost have dialogue. Right. They, they, they actually like talk to they talk to each other. Like you hear one of them be all like jump and miss. And it's like, <laughs> there's even a moment where they swing on it. One of them swings on a rope and goes, ah. <laughs> Right? It's insane. Oh, that's the that's the zip line the zip line scene. Yeah. Yes. It's yes. Insane. <laughs> um but yeah, Pete so what so what happens with uh little kitty kitty here? It it, uh, it runs into the drywall. It runs uh, there's a vent opening and it runs into the uh yeah, in, inside the walls and the lady's like, "Well, okay, let's just give Pete let's give the uh cat its snack." It's like, "Oh, yeah, he's a uh, Oh, he was here. It's like he didn't go into the drywall again. Oh, you're you're gonna get him out. We have to give him cat food, and he hates cat food. And it's like apparently you treat this cat better than you treat your husband, lady. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that cat like, gets the <laughs> shit beat out of it, <laughs> right? But the cat doesn't give up either because it throws the spider into the uh, into the uh, physics defying um, drywall. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Multiple drywall times. does not apply like that <laughs> at all. <laughs> it's basically a Tom and Jerry cartoon in the drywall. Yes. Oh, yeah, hands down. And what's funny is the spider doesn't well, it maybe it eats him later, but the spider doesn't eat him at first. It lures him into the light above the ceiling <laughs> to electrocute the cat. I can just I can just see it as like this rough and tumble like constantly like up the wall for some reason and then back down to the side and off to and over and then around and then yeah I I'm pretty sure it electrifies either both of them or just the cat but <laughs> it's like oh my he's God. like come on come on come on get it get so... it <laughs> right <laughs> yeah oh it's so funny because but I love the 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 uh, the deputy just constantly like looking at the wall going like. I, now I can't remember the cat's name, but, um, like, just, we'll call it, like, Rufus or something. Yeah. And she's all like, Ru- Rufus? 
Rufus? <laughs> it's like, the, the cat's not gonna come to you, dude. Uh, so dead. his wife leaves him. Which is so odd. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't stick the cat in the wall. Right! So, uh, I think we, we kind of skipped over, and I don't want to dwell on it a lot, but there's also some sort of budding romance between David Arquette and the sheriff throughout the movie, too. Budding, it's the, rekindling. But, well... Re, well... I don't think it was ever... He, he's... He's always had a thing for her, especially when he wanted to tell her that her uh, her her former husband was cheating on her. Yeah, right? which is why he punched him and then left town. Right, for 10 and then years. you know they <laughs> they kind of re, they, they kind of rekindled their uh, their little moment after um, after uh, David Arquette punched the mayor in the face for egging him on for cheating on her. And then oh, okay. for, at least they didn't murder for, her like, mine. Yeah. <laughs> We have Scarlett Johansson saying, like, you know, he's he's not so bad looking for an old fogey type. And it's like, first off, he's not that older, not that much older than you. And then the wife, the, 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 the sheriff's like, yeah, he just he just needs a shave. Oh, guys, you know what? Have- I think I know why she calls him an old fogey. Um, originally in the script, that line was there, but that's because the role was originally going to be played by George C. Scott. That's <laughs> they had to they forgot to change that line when they recast it. I'm back to save the mines. <laughs> He's kind of cute for an old fogey. Oh, that's that's a disturbing line in that. <laughs> Turn it <laughs> off. That casting. Turn it off. <laughs> My dad found the Agua Mason load. I believe him. <laughs> that's such a weird phrasing. I didn't even know the Aqua. I didn't know what he was Mesa talking load. about at all at first. I'm Aqua Mesa load makes it sound like, yeah, he had a sto- he had a stockpile of. You know, mouthwash down in them mines. <laughs> the Aqua Mesa load. <laughs> oh, fuck. So, they, uh, yeah, so, so the, the cat meets its unfortunate demise. Uh, meanwhile, Gladys tells David Arquette, you know, blah, 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 you should go and tell her, tell the sheriff how you really feel. By the way, shave your face. She says, shave your face because it looks like a stripper's crutch. But the crotch, when she says crotch, it's, like, censored by the sound of the tea kettle. Right. I'm like, this is PG-13. I'm pretty sure you could say crotch. You could say stripper's crotch. Yeah. That was weird. <laughs> I remember watching that when I was younger. and I, when, I, when I first saw it, and I had the subtitles on for that part just because I was like, what did she say? And in the subtitles, it comes up crotch. And I'm like, why? Who? Like, what was going on with the sound here? <laughs> <laughs> guys we we can uh we gotta push eight-legged freaks another month you gotta find some way around that stripper's crotch line that's that's too far for us we're gonna give you an r rating <laughs> Fine. uh but back at the uh back at the sheriff's abode um the kid is like creepily videotaping his mom mm-hmm. i had that written down he's just like around the corner with a little camcorder thing mom's handing out tasers <laughs> <laughs> I, right, which Scarlett Johansson repeatedly calls a stun gun. Yes, <laughs> and she also says, "I'm not going to end up a trailer trash like you." Oh, she is. Oh a my total gosh, bitch! Oh, that? that was awful. Right, and you can, and I. It's actually like probably one of my favorite moments because it's probably the most honest in the entire film, where the mother's all like, "Yeah, thanks for the flashback. Stop, pause, turn around. I didn't deserve that." <laughs> and I was like, "Damn." That was yeah. that was definitely Carrie War's audition scene. Yeah, Patty and I were watching it. Even Patty was like, "Whoa, like <laughs> this movie took a turn really quick." Yeah, I right? mean they're both kind of shit kids. Yeah, I mean like even even Scarlett Johansson, she should realize like the character is saying like, "I'm not going to get pregnant and become a trailer trash mom and sheriff, blah blah blah, like you." And it's like, uh, listen, bitch, you realize she had you. And you are that baby. <laughs> like, calm, it calm the fuck down. Enjoying this nice house that we live in? <laughs> right. Um, she also, when she's like, so they cut, they make up very quickly. And she says, fine, I'll take the, I'll take the quote unquote stun gun. And, uh, I don't know why I have this written down, but I think she's trying to reassure Scarlet about, like, what she can do with her life. And I just wrote down for some reason, you ever thought about playing a nice Japanese assassin? <laughs> or Russian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's true. Oh, by the way, holy shit, guys. 
Hmm. Her name is Black Widow in the Avengers. Yes. I actually <laughs> make that note. <laughs> I have awesome. a note later on. She's literally the Black Widow. Yeah, so David Arquette comes by and tries to woo the sheriff a little bit, but he's all clumsy and awkward. He's got flowers. He's talking to his arresting officer. <laughs> it's, he's, it's, he's trying to like reassure himself as he's approaching the door. It's like, I'm a man. You're a woman. And it's like, no, 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 no. That's not it. What? I've got that backwards. I know I've got that backwards. <laughs> and then he's like, I picked him myself. Hands her the flowers. Yeah. Uh, it's almost cringy to watch that scene. I'm not going to lie. It, 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 it kind of is, especially because he's walking away. He's like, mm, I picked him myself. <laughs> <laughs> he's losing his mind. Him and Mike are going to lead the spiders together. Uh... Why is there? Why does uh, shit kid suddenly have a tape recorder? That wasn't around earlier, right? No, he. I don't know. Just I mean, it's it's kind of like the idea that you know you take like Macaulay Culkin in the house where he's treated poorly, and then suddenly you know he has that uh, that talkback machine. <laughs> I like they don't show they from now they don't on, show it ahead of time. From now on, <laughs> I'm only calling it a talkback machine. <laughs> well, they actually call it. Like, I can't remember the, the name. Talk boy. <gasps> Okay, see, I was close. <laughs> no, it's a talkback machine from now on. <laughs> Fantastic. No, he didn't. He didn't have it earlier. He just suddenly miraculously has all this technology. You got your talkback started up. <laughs> Go to channel two. <laughs> it's, just, it's just like a. Um, it's like a tiny digital recorder. That's all it really is. Yeah, it's just weird that they don't establish that right away that he does that. It's just suddenly like. Now I'm gonna go look for Joshua again, and now I have a tape recorder. <laughs> right, because he because he calls Joshua, and he doesn't get a, he doesn't get any answer from the store, and we see while in the store that it's covered in spider webs, and Joshua's you know cocooned and obviously drained body is on the ground while it's suddenly dragged away. Yeah, it was nice of the spiders to leave him there till Mike discovered his body. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, immediately after he sees him, they're like, all right, you got it? You got this point of the plot? All right, he's ours now. And the, and the kid hitchhikes back from Joshua's place, taking rides from strangers. Great idea. Right? Yeah. Hey, hey, mister, can you give me a ride? Yeah, sure, kid. <laughs> and that's when he and David are kept make their spider army plan. I actually felt, just before this, I felt it was really a missed opportunity for them to do some great stuff with the soundtrack. Mm-hmm. Because when he went in and discovered Joshua, he could have been walking into spider webs, <laughs> leave a message and I call you back. No, but instead, this soundtrack <laughs> is basically every time spiders are around, it's just a variation on the Itsy Bitsy Spider song. Yeah. It's yeah. some kind of remix of that because apparently they couldn't afford any other songs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's super 90s one. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> but it, like it feels weird in a movie like this. You'd think it'd have like a rockin' soundtrack, you know? You'd think. <laughs> uh, I have written down Spider Candyman for some reason. Oh yeah, that miner that has spiders crawling out of his mouth. Oh, oh because he was. It was so weird because he was like sucking on the hose yeah, <laughs> to like I guess get the water phrasing um, to get the water out apparently, but I mean. <laughs> What, what were you going to do if it was, like, a big chunk of mud? Were you just going to, like, swallow the mud? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because basically um, David Arquette has the miners ba- back to work in the mines because he wants to find all that, that gold, right? The Agua, mm-hmm. Agua Mesa, whatever the fuck it's called. The Agua Mesa mi- load. Thank you. Uh, so, you know, the miners trying to suck the load out of the tube. <laughs> <laughs> and... It, it ends up being a bunch of spiders that then all crawl out of his mouth and kill him. So. It, it almost does that comical, like, you know, the guy's on the stage too long and the, the long cane comes from off stage and just drags him <laughs> off to the side. <laughs> <laughs> we do get uh, Mike returning home at this point. Uh, his mom catches him, a.k.a. the sheriff. He does this whole thing where he start, he starts he starts he tries to tell her that there's like giant spiders or there's gonna be giant spiders. That's why everybody's pets are starting to disappear. And she says the most screenplay thing ever 
because he's watching like a, the TV's on. There's like a giant spider movie, and she's like, "This is just your media induced paranoid delusional nightmare." Like, I believe he, I believe he was actually watching, um, like I think it's 1954's Them. Okay. Or like 1960's Them, the giant ant movie. It's Which just is one of... absolutely an inspiration point for this movie. It's just right. I always laugh when people like say. Uh, say such a wordy thing like this, like, media-induced paranoid delusional nightmare, as if that's a normal th- way to talk. It, I mean, honestly, it actually makes a lot of sense that, and I'm fairly certain that it was them that was on his TV, because in that movie, you have a scientist who's trying to warn everybody, like, we shouldn't, you know, use radioactivity, you know, on these ants. It'll, it, like, it makes them grow, and it's going to come back and bite us in the ass. Literally. And they're like, be be quiet. You're a woman, and then like no one no one listens to her, and it's like oh we're all doomed. I'm I'm surprised with that movie being in the fifties that the the resolution is like they don't listen to her, and then they're all they're fine. Yeah. <laughs> don't listen to her. She's a woman. See, everything was fine. The end. <laughs> now this scene coming up here, I really uh, got a kick out of. This is the ostrich scene. Oh yeah, over to Mare, don't care. <laughs> K- AKA, um, I think it's kind of a ripoff of Jurassic Park: The Lost World. Because, isn't it like that scene where they're getting pulled out of the bushes by the raptors? Okay. Like, they oh, just, like, like left and right, left and right. Yeah, it, it's it reminded me of it With, for some reason. Yeah, they're like going through like the tall grass, and like they keep getting grabbed. Yeah. Yeah, I get you. Yeah, I get you. Okay, did either one of you guys feel totally cock blocked by the fact that the mayor does not? get it like for the longest time um, oh yeah like he's yeah. he's living in his own world though he's he's up on his you know big fancy house mm-hmm. he has his he has his personal ostrich farm right outside he, <laughs> as one he, does as, because, as one because does his his mall which nobody goes to <laughs> also sells ostrich he, burgers <laughs> right and he relishes in it he's all he's just like sitting there quietly it is dead it is empty and he's just like mm, mm, mm. That was a good ostrich burger. And he looks around, and he's all like, it's a little slow tonight, huh? And she's all like, the fuck are you talking about? It's always slow. <laughs> there, is, there is no one here. No but one we can find afford out to go in, to the mall. <laughs> we find out in this scene that he doesn't give a crap about his son. No. Going out, you know, and getting into orgies and whatnot, because that's what he literally says to him. He's like, I'm on the phone. I'm busy. Go. Have fun. Yeah, this is the daddy's. Sun. Daddy's trying to hide toxic waste under the city. <laughs> this is also the son that uh, uh, wants to hook up with uh, Scarlett Johansson. Yes, and get and gets tased in the in the nuts. Oh, Let's well. not get ahead of ourselves. Well, we'll get to that in a second. <laughs> no, that's already that's already happened. That's already transpired. No, no, that's we coming did, up. We, I, that hasn't I thought happened we skipped yet. it. Has not oh, happened yet okay, because we mind. have the the Sweeney Todd scene. With uh, David Arquette. And I wrote that down too. <laughs> yes. The, the barber, who I'm kind of sure is gay. What the barber? Yeah. What you get a, a vibe from him? Well, just later on when he's got like his friend who's in like the back room who like apparently lives with them. Oh. I think it's just the one guy who always like sits in the barber shop and reads. I like to think you it's know, like, like stealthfully progressive. This movie. <laughs> I like to. Th- well, he already knows. He already knows that he is deaf. He tells him, you know, you're, you're turn to town. You're deaf anyways. See? I, I do like that. Uh, I do like that, that. This barber, who by the way, uh, Nathan's a Sweeney Todd because he, this barber wants is is for the whole town selling everything. I'm assuming because that he he kind of vaguely threatens David Arquette's character. Like yeah. I'm gonna give you a shave, but be still. I don't want to cut you. Um, yeah, it's like. We can't charge as much as people in big towns with jobs and money. <laughs> and money. <laughs> but then later, when because when he talks about the guy who died, he's just like, "My best customer died." <laughs> like, see, but he's, he's still they got to keep it under wraps, right? It's one of those things that everyone in town kind of knows but doesn't really say. I mean, no, but it's funny that right, he doesn't even refer right. to him as a friend. Just like my best customer. <laughs> right. No one says like Bob. Bob, my best customer died. It's like, yeah, why does Bob need a shave every day? <laughs> be, be quiet. <laughs> I'm in. I'm in mourning. I do all body hair. <laughs> <laughs> One patch at a time. It's the barber way. <laughs> it's like I don't and think then, that's a barber way. Are you a barber? <laughs> Shut your damn mouth. 
And then <laughs> next is when we get that front seat leaning nut shocker. Okay. Hashtag me too, Brett. <laughs> That's what I wrote. Because, uh, so they're making out Scarlett Johansson and that dude. He's getting pretty fresh. He's, yes. uh, he's getting, he's trying to, you know, he's doing some groping. And he's like, oh, come on, you should bring out the animal in me. Oh, like a total gosh. douchebag. Um, so she zaps his nuts and <laughs> he pisses himself. <laughs> it's a weird sound effect for it too because the sound that you hear would be someone like peeing on the ground not peeing In like pants, from inside yeah. their pants this is also the <laughs> this is also the kind of movie this is the uh the kind of movie that you clearly see that he's pissed himself then they also need to have him say i pissed myself <laughs> as if you didn't get the joke well maybe maybe he couldn't even feel it so i mean that could have been the reason why he looks down he's like <laughs> Oh, man. Did you feel that they all of a sudden, from that point forward, after he pisses himself, the rest of the movie, he, he's a lot more flamboyant? I'm not, even, not. I'm not no. even trying to make, like, a like a gay joke or anything there. I honestly, like, from that scene forward, he seems like his voice is a little more high-pitched. Like, uh, he, he seems a little more, like, uh, he, he's a little more, like, flamboyant. Like, I just got that... Well... Obviously, the shock from the taser, like, shot his testicles up and uh, made him a tenor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, yeah, so he is zapped. Scarlet, Scarlet takes off. She's like, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not feeling she steal, this. She steals his truck. She steals his truck. I'm not feeling this. <laughs> See you later. As soon as she leaves, the spiders show up. On the horizon. Yes. Immediately, immediately as she leaves. This is probably my favorite scene. <laughs> uh, Brett and his dirt bike buddies are just driving away, and these jumping spiders are just chasing and attacking them and attacking them. I think they kill all but all but Brett. Yeah, yeah I think so too. Yeah, because he does this like Superman like he's tr- saved by a pull knack-knack. back from his bike, and he uh, and he kicks it. He yeah. drop kicks a spider. I think it's called. Right. I think it's called the knack knack. <laughs> oh, okay. What is that a real thing? I think so. Oh, okay. I, I was I, I, man, I was big into the X Games in the nineties. Uh, are you former dirt biker? No, no. Okay. Barely a former, you know, cyclist. Um, I like how when he gets away, so he gets away, and then a bu- like the spiders attack this truck that <laughs> like blows up and kills a bunch of them, but then a bunch of them show up on the horizon again, and he says. I love these things. All your friends are dead. (laughs) (laughs) And, and like, who stops? Who stops to watch to make sure that they're exploding? No, keep going. Yeah, cool guys don't look back at explosions. (laughs) (laughs) They they turn around and then walk away. Right. Who's got time to look at explosions? And, and obviously, like, he's not... (laughs) He's not caring enough that, like, clearly the man in the truck is now dead. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, he doesn't yeah. care about that at all. Man, my life doesn't have enough excitement. <laughs> I'm gonna go get an ostrich burger. <laughs> I hear there's a sudden That's... influx of meat at the mall. <laughs> well, obviously he gets all of his ostriches from uh oh, I'm gonna try to say from Fred Ward on Tremors <laughs> because he invested in that ostrich farm. <laughs> <laughs> Tying it together. Nice oh my job. God. This, my bloody Valentine, Tremors. All in a shared universe. All right, Nathan, Demons of Ludlow, integrate it. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, got, got nothing. Yeah, so Glad- this, the, 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 we got uh, Gladys' unfortunate uh, fake out. Uh, her demise, as far as we know at this point, and mm-hmm. her little doggy. Yeah, that dog's dead. Yeah, yeah. that dog is gone. Um... <laughs> And then she ends up, she's like, Bruiser gets, climbs into the wall <laughs> to find him. Lady, there is a gigantic hole in your wall. Wherever that dog is, it is not a safe place. And she's going with a lit cigarette yep. and like a, like a, a fireplace poker. And she's like, oh my God, oh my God, Bruiser, I'm coming, baby. <laughs> Maybe they'll be scared of bronchitis. <laughs> He just wants to be a dog. Is that so wrong? Is that so wrong? <laughs> I wanted like the aunt 
to like be a bit more tough. Like the spider bites her, middle, like, what are you doing? Get off that tickle. Stop it. I've, <laughs> I've survived two ex husbands. You're nothing to me, spider. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we're doing a remake and casting Harvey Firestein is happening. Yes, please do it. I just Harvey, and not even like a good attempt to to cover the fact that he's playing a woman. Just a wig, <laughs> beard. Oh and no, all. no, 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 no! He can he can put on the same makeup and dress that he had when he did um, hairspray on Broadway. It's perfect. It's perfect. Harvey Firestein dazzles as Gladys. <laughs> Anybody got a cigarette? <laughs> so yeah, Gladys is uh, Gladys is taken. Uh, David Arquette finds. I, I don't think he finds her, but he look. What does he? See? I think he sees her being like spun up in a web or something. I, I don't even think he sees it. No. He um he he finds the uh, the poker in there right. because we we watch her going round and round and round being spun. And he he like finally then finds uh, <laughs> like a record right player. round, <laughs> round um, round. He finds the exoskeleton, like the similar one that the kid showed him in the car, but it's obviously like four times the size. Yeah, that ain't no cactus. And, yeah, and then God, that's so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and then he then he makes it like he makes it uh, all the way to the sheriff's house, and she's just like going to the door, and it's all like. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, let me in. He's like, is so-and-so here? She's like, yeah, why? And she's like, okay, I'll explain later. Is your nine-year-old kid here? (laughs) Can I see your nine-year-old? Why? Don't worry about it! I'm going to this room and locking the door! Look, he's got a computer, right? (laughs) He's got... It's... Okay, alarming. Alarming uh, uh, red flags here. Is your child home? Uh, (laughs) I'm locking the door. Does he have a computer? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I have to see him right now. I'm not telling you what it is. <laughs> and she just she comes in casually, like, "What spider?" <laughs> She's like, "Yeah, what? What? What hole?" What hole? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's still, he's got he's got like a, a part of the spider leg, and uh, of course, Mike is like, "I'll get my computer program up specifically designed for this sort of research." <laughs> Um, right. <laughs> shows him how big the spider like, would be. It was it was meant to be this big. And he's like, yeah, but the hole was much bigger. And I'm thinking, calm down your phrasing to a ten year old boy. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, <laughs> sheriff, get out of here. We need to do more research. <laughs> oh, this movie is a stealth. <laughs> what I don't no, know. No, 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 oh. no, no. It may be. It's it's a sequel to The Woodsman. Look, oh, God. <laughs> this movie is not associated with the North American Marlon Brando Association look like or whatever that was. So yeah, he he shows him the uh, the size of the spider, and uh, <laughs> meanwhile Scarlett Johansson is taking a shower, and she yeah she's getting out yeah she's getting out she's got the towel on she gets attacked by a spider. This scene is weirdly sexual. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like spinning that white web in her face. It's it's not even like spinning. Like that abdomen is like throbbing and thrusting forward. It's very <laughs> and very awkward. I gotta say, it was uh, it was pretty gross. Because I mean, yeah, I mean, it's she likes like... Pod, Kid Rock, Matchbox Twenty, Take Five, and even Third Eye Blind. And, Disgusting. And Spider Cum. Well, that too. Spider- but I mean, really. <laughs> P.O.D. Gross. Ugh. I mean, it's 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 almost as immediately it reminded me of the uh, the scene in the Red Band trailer for the Happy Time Murders, where <laughs> the silly string is going all over the room, and I'm thinking like, this is <laughs> almost like, is this the same creative director? <laughs> Can't wait Brian, to see that movie. Brian Henson on set of Eight Legged Freaks. <laughs> <laughs> I've got an idea. <laughs> I'll write it in twenty only, years, but I only want this scene. <laughs> But yeah, so after the spider comes in Scarlett Johansson's face, um, <laughs> luckily David Arquette makes it in time. And uh, but but it's the sheriff that actually has a shotgun and and kills the spider because mm-hmm. Carrie Wer kicks some fucking ass in this movie, guys. Damn right she does. A little bit. And she's uh, yeah, so she kills the spider, and they're like, "Do you believe us now?" Waka waka. <laughs> <laughs> I wish they said that. <laughs> Uh, oh. So now, guys, we've 
we've got to we've got to find some way to tell everyone that there's giant spiders in the town. Uh, but first of all, she's got to contact Pete and <laughs> tell him to get every single gun that they have, which I'm assuming is like eight guns. And yeah. And he's just like, oh, all the guns? Oh, oh, okay. Whoa. Even Oswald's like, gun? Uh, yeah, Lee Harvey Oswald's gun. He's like, Har- why do we even have this? Why do they have Lee Harvey <laughs> Oswald's gun? It's it's just a gag. No, but yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a strange detail. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> which then uh, Dougie Doug is able to play on later, which is pretty great. It's it's part of the it's part of the cover up. Where do they hide the gun? The sequel is uh, all the stuff that Dougie Doug was right about. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, then they re- then they're like, oh, I know. Let's go to uh, let's go to uh, the D- Dougie Doug's radio station and tell the world about what's actually going on. We'll broadcast it over the radio. Because currently the phones are out due to that uh, tanker exploding. Right. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. So nobody can use the phone. So instead they'll just they'll just broadcast on the radio on the conspiracy radio channel that everyone blows off as nonsense. Let's just keep that in <laughs> right. mind. No, regardless of whether she says I'm the sheriff, this is the crazy man that everyone listens to for laughs. Except Gladys, who thinks he's very. Except smart. Gladys. <laughs> he's, I think he's very informative. I like him. <laughs> he keeps me company. You haven't been home in ten years. Bruzy <laughs> likes him too. Is that so wrong? <laughs> also, there's a, there's a technical thing here that I really I, I just bugged me for some reason. It shouldn't, but like when she's talking to Pete on the radio and he ho- he's holding the button down like stammering, she like cuts him off with her radio. No, 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 no. He would have to let that's go not, of that that's button. That's not how radios work. <laughs> he would need to let go of that button in order for her to talk. She would not be able to interrupt him while he's on his radio. That's why people say over at the end of when they're talking so the next person can talk. <sighs> but anyway, I think this is where they make it to the station, right? Yeah, they do. Okay. And he was all like, oh, listen, everybody, our lovely law enforcement for our peculiar little town wants to make an announcement. (laughs) (laughs) And my thing is, like, why not just try to announce something more convincing to the town instead of just being like, hey, listen, there's giant spiders. So let's all meet up at the mall. (laughs) Get all your weapons. And why is it that when people are doomed, they go to the mall? Well, I mean, Dawn of the Dead, right? Right. I think yeah. that started it. Yeah. I think I think every I think all these movies just want to be Dawn of the Dead. Maybe I don't know. Well, what's the possibility? They tell everyone to make it to the mall, and then I think one of my favorite parts because I actually think Dougie Doug is pretty amazing in this movie. He does a good job. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Uh, I like how they when they announce giant spiders all over the radio, he's like, "That's stupid." Yes, it's the guy that's like <laughs> talking about anal probes and like right and aliens There's, and government cover-ups. There is uh, a, at one point there is a tad too much probe talk for my liking. <gasps> yeah, it, he 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 like leans back and gets comfortable with it. He's like, let me let me talk to you about the probe. It, let me tell you why the probe is not going to come near it you. Got, it got borderline homophobic, <laughs> right? Yep. Yeah, okay. I'm glad I'm not the only one that saw it, because he's just like, Don't put that anal probe near me! You shouldn't even be near there! And I'm like, whoa, calm down. Like, but and he goes into, like, the good detail of all, like, but why? Why do you need to go up there? Why do you need the probe? <laughs> what, what What are you possibly finding? <laughs> yeah, and I'm like... Ain't, get, ain't gonna get no probe near me. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I'll be right back. I'm gonna go get on my bobsled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know what I do it every night? Keep the government away. I kiss my egg. <laughs> Shared universe with cool runnings. <laughs> it's all coming together, man. John John Candy was the man who signed off on the fact that toxic waste is going to be delivered in an unsecure uh, <laughs> truck, <laughs> and uh, and hire the man who swerves at a fucking rabbit, <laughs> run the rabbit over. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you this as uh, a, a fella who has truckers in his family they will not swerve for shit i mean unless it's a car or a person okay if they see an animal in the road 
guess what? That animal's going down. I mean, I, I'd let the town suffer from giant spiders to save the rabbit. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just a cute little bunny. Nope. Deserves it. Well, I'll get. I'll, I'll just. I'll call up Izzy right now. I'll get her on my side. <laughs> you go right ahead. She's not a trucker. Uh, holy shit. Where are we? Yeah. So uh, and this is where the giant spider. Well, they yes. attack, the, the spider attacks the trailer, right? Where where they're broadcasting. Right. And um, the tarantula. Straight from Panama. <laughs> what? Yeah. Any, nobody. Am I the only Slackers fan here? Slackers, like no. the movie with fucking uh, no, like the band, the oh, Slackers. Oh, I think went Slackers with like I have no idea. Devin Sawa. They have a show. song. They have a song called Tarantula. My tarantula don't want none unless it got bugs, huh? Tarantula. Oh no! Straight from Panama. Fish off the boat. <laughs> you you are your own little island right now. <laughs> I have no idea. Just, <laughs> just how it usually is. <laughs> so anyway, um, for some reason, they're still broadcasting while this trailer's being attacked by the giant spider. And the people who are listening are not believing any of it, like, they think it's a prank, until they start hearing, like, faint gunshots, and then they're like, whoa, maybe it is real. Like, that's what he's, convinces he's them. He's up to special effects. <laughs> yeah, his budget's not this high. <laughs> So, yeah, they start to buy it a little bit, and, um, and I'm like, guys, has anyone here never heard of radio play? Like, that's just, <laughs> it's clearly, <laughs> that wouldn't be enough to convince me, is all I'm saying. Especially if it was on this channel. I uh, don't know. I, I, I'm feeling that, uh, Dougie Doug's character doesn't put that much production value into his daily presentations. I don't know, because earlier they, they're, they even say, like, well, it's one of Harlan's old ridiculous tricks. So. Right, and they could probably think that, like, oh, look, he's getting guests on now. <laughs> <laughs> the sheriff is there. We know her. <laughs> well, um, oh, yeah, I don't want to say that yet. I don't want to spoil it yet. Um, but so the spiders are finally in town. And uh, it's a great moment where this guy, they do the whole, like, the guy fumbling with his keys. Uh, one, of the, yeah. one of the people to get into his car. But it's more like he just forgot how to use keys. <laughs> he just kind of jams them up against the side of the car like he doesn't know how to put it in a lock. And, you know, the spiders kill a bunch of people. Oh, but we finally get to the mall, folks. This is the this is the giant showdown we've all been waiting for. Uh, where Dougie Doug has to be reminded these are not aliens, they're giant spiders. Stop calling them aliens. They do not look anything like aliens. I did like the riff about how they were s spiders from Mars. Yeah. A little David Bowie <laughs> reference. Fine, they're spiders yeah. from Mars. <laughs> it's like, does that make sense to you? Fine. <laughs> I loved the moment where the spider jumped into the diner and it tried to eat the stuffed animal head on the wall. Mm. <laughs> yes. And that's one of those like sound effects where he just like he takes a bite and is like. <laughs> did you like, notice oh, that God, Moses was like eating that. at the diner? What? There was this old dude with a huge beard. It looked like Moses at the diner. Oh, yeah, that guy. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah, like ZZ Top came in for some soup. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought at first when that spider jumped on that moose head, too, that it was going to start humping it. <laughs> <laughs> like, no one stops to help anybody when they're attacked by a spider. No. They're all running for their lives. No like, no one helps the waitress. They all get in their cars. They drive to the mall where the mayor does the stupid line of like, if you build it, they will come. <laughs> Have you ever met somebody who's legitimately afraid of spiders? They will not stop and help you. <laughs> Especially giant spiders. Right? <laughs> um, th now, again, this is the thing. So we, we said that when, when they were on the radio station, I was like, why, why say giant spiders? Say something slightly more believable so people will actually go to the mall and, like, help each other. They finally get the opportunity to call 911 by climbing up this tower, and David Arquette immediately is like, there's giant spiders! <laughs> he's, like, he's like, I know how it's going to sound. 
but they're here. They're here. And she's all like, okay, sorry, sir, sir, this is 911. I'm hanging up on you <laughs> the, now. The, the, line, the line is like, this is not phone a joke. Yeah. <laughs> right. Great line. That's Great the line. Says. Um, this is also where uh, I think this is a cool moment. So everyone pretty much gets out. Pete actually is kind of heroic and stays behind. So I actually thought Pete mm-hmm. was doomed here when I first saw this. I thought he was done for. Mm-hmm. But he manages to get under one of those gates that d- just so happened to not be locked. Uh, and he he does this thing where he has a chainsaw and the legs reach through the I gate. I love that part. Yeah, and he just like grinds the chainsaw against all the legs of the spiders. Um, right. Through the gate. And I mean, I, that was pretty I don't cool, know. I gotta say. I don't know if like the, the toxic waste has made these spiders like extra juicy <laughs> but but it's almost like nickelodeon slime is just coming out of their legs <laughs> and every orifice <laughs> and i think he gets like the worst out of all of it of anyone else in the movie <laughs> like when he's in the car and he's like why didn't anyone tell me it's all over my face <laughs> <laughs> but by this point the mayor has like up and ditched them yeah, he's, and like yes. locked him, and locked him inside too. <laughs> yeah, on top of everything else, like he didn't need to do that part. No, and again, like he, like he doesn't care at all. Like Nathan said earlier, I'm also wondering why isn't he dead yet? <laughs> like why hasn't he been killed off by a spider yet? Mm-hmm. Uh, but David Arquette, uh, we go back go back to the cell tower just for this moment where he David Arquette gets to scream, "Get back!" You hate like it, freaks! Which, <laughs> we have a title. By the way, that was an improv line, and that's how they came up with the title. Really? Yeah, because yep. the, the original title was Iraq Attack. Yep. Which they also used earlier in the movie. They sure did. Yeah, they they gave a nod. Yeah, so I wrote, yeah, here's the part where I wrote, I talked about earlier, the spider on the zip line going, ah! <laughs> And it comically hits the vent and just does that slow, like, yeah! Yeah, it's very... <laughs> and falls off. Very cartoonish. Oh, it's so funny. You know what? Dougie Doug's character, he's the only black guy in, in the whole town. Nope, nope, that's not true. Oh. You have the guy at the town meeting who says, yeah, it was a great investment for this mall, just like that ostrich farm. Oh, you mean the guy <laughs> that gets all the spiders in his mouth? Yes. So now he's the only black guy in the town. <laughs> now he's the only Aww. black guy. No, no wonder he's like paranoid. All these like southern white dudes all around all all times. <laughs> I'd be freaked out too. I love the I love the old man, the the barber, when he's like hiding in like you know the uh, the Footlocker like changing room with his pitchfork, <laughs> and then he then he gets like chased after the tent. <laughs> Oh yeah, slowly, slowly and surely. But he's not looking. Yeah, that part just that part makes me giggle. Just super, super funny because I mean, even though the spider is clearly in the tent, it would have to have like put its feet through the tent in order to make it like turn around <laughs> and then slowly follow him. I wanted the spider to like unzip the tent. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, a bunch of people getting killed off. Uh, gro- gropey boyfriend Brent is back, and or Brett, sorry, and uh, he uh, <laughs> take that Brent. I did not mean that as a slam, on Brent. <laughs> um, but he he comes in just in time to uh, to break down that to break down the wall of Jericho. Break it all down. He's been he's been driving through the mines trying to like get away, which. Uh, from the from the spiders ever since he you know after after the truck exploded yeah. he like found his way into the mines which I have to wonder um if that mine is full of methane gas would you be able to drive right. a he's motorcycle he's driving the dirt bike yeah. especially if he has to start it up again right like whenever it mm. it stalls out I don't think that would be a safe thing to do I the startup might be an issue, but if he it was going, it is an internal combustion engine. It it, it definitely I, is started think, up later. I think it does. I think it stops because, especially when um, when the mayor goes into the uh, into the mines and the mayor gets pulled off the bike and he watches his stepdad get dragged away, <laughs> I think he has to get back on the bike and start it up again in order to drive away. Which it does well, and it's weird. Like each time he puts on his helmet, I'm like, that's going to obscure your view in a dark mine. <laughs> A valid point. 
Just forget about the helmet. <laughs> right. Also, like, um, so at that point when uh, Mayor, what's his name, Nathan? Mayor Dickweed? Mayor Dickweed, may, Mayor Don't Care. Um, <laughs> uh, but he gets... Mayor don't, Mayor don't Care. He gets dragged away, and I'm like, oh, finally, he gets killed off. Nope, he'll be back. Um, but yeah, gropey boyfriend Brett breaks down the wall of Jericho, and all the people are like, yay, and they go into the mines. Follow the kid. As they all say, uh, uh, and it's weird at this point because, like I said, Mayor Dickweed comes back and he's alive. You had the perfect opportunity to just kill off his character right there, mm-hmm. and and yet he. Okay, spoiler alert, guys. Mayor Dickweed does not die in this movie, but now he has to he has to worry about something towards the. But isn't end. that weird? Oh, that he was, doesn't die. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's the evil mayor. Just a bit. Like. Maybe maybe it's because they have him connected to, like, Brett. And he's, like, sort of changing his ways. I don't know. It's it's strange. Um, and then we, you know, the David Arquette, Carrie Wara romance is all tied up nice and neat. She 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 knows exactly what happened. She only knows everything that happened. that that With the whole husband thing and him leaving for ten years. So, I mean... It's it's sort of like it's kind of like a, a G plot. Like it's so in the background of this movie. But not important to anything else. Well, he keeps trying to tell her and she just is like constantly shutting him down. Yeah. But she gives him a she she kisses him. So, you know, thank thankfully the electric chemistry between those two is all wrapped up. Mhm. Uh Gladys is alive. He finds her. <laughs> and, and the first thing she tries to do when coming out of the cocoon. Oh, Gladys. <laughs> She's like, I just I just need one more. One more, <laughs> one more cigarette. <laughs> He's like, no! Don't smoke! It's like, thank God you... Thank God you couldn't, you know, use the, the one-strike matches. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the, the plan at this point is to set off the gas. Mm-hmm. Uh, he puts matches in this, like... He put uh, he, anyway. He sets up the mat, some matches to go off as as the spider chases them because they find the giant Consuela spider, <laughs> of which we get the great line "Adios Consuela," <laughs> and she was which, like, "How no, did he? How did he learn no. the name?" <laughs> I don't think he was around for the name, was he? So like, yeah, it was Joshua and like the kid. So unless there's like a random scene that wasn't shown where the kid is saying like. Okay, and he has all these spiders, and they're like running around, and there's the big one, Consuela, and she. <laughs> They they do uh, they do find the Agua Mesa load, mm-hmm. uh, which by the way I totally forgot about this point. I was like, "What? There's gold in there? <laughs> what?" <laughs> yeah, they they never explained what it was. They just said like, "I I know my father said he saw that vein." <laughs> right. Um, and, and Gladys actually, to her credit, Gladys sees it. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. She's like, "All that gold." <laughs> which there's something else later that makes no sense because. They're they're driving out on the motorcycle. The giant spider's following them on this motorcycle. Which which by the way, there are shots where you see the motorcycle moving not very fast at all, but somehow they were outrunning like a giant fireball. Yes. <laughs> um, and the entire mine like blows to hell, like that thing is destroyed. But which you can see how big the mine is because it g- apparently goes from that entrance. All the way to the mall. Yeah. Like, these mines, apparently, like, it's kind of like a college town. Like, you know, the, the town is purposely built for the college. Like, we're going to put a town exactly on top of these mines. No one will ever know that they're there. They make it out of there in time. Uh, Gladys says, don't start smoking because it causes explosions. So she's learned her ways. <laughs> with. It's a dangerous habit. Yeah. And then I think this, I know this is a, str- uh, a, a, a strong statement to make, but I think this is the craziest part of the movie. Because an entire police force arrives from another town, and they're like, oh, so you did believe our 911 call. No, we listen to um, Dougie Doug's crazy radio show all the time. Never miss an episode. Yeah, never miss an episode. We never, we never miss an episode. So we just rallied <laughs> the entire police force to come to your town on the basis that we believed him that there were giant spiders invading mm-hmm. the town. I love the one deputy, like, he's coming out of the car and he's all like, all right, 
where's the aliens? <laughs> right. <laughs> like he's he's so trigger happy. I don't want to. I I would be terrified to live in the town that's run by these police officers. <laughs> they must be so bored. But like, it, it's obviously uh, the entire police force is. These two cops are from one other small town. The fire truck is from another small town. They're just leaving all these tiny towns defenseless. Yes. This is where the sequel comes in. This is how the other spiders get to the other town. Because they have no first responders <laughs> at all. It is a dangerously stupid police force. <laughs> <laughs> like, imagine... That's like, imagine if, like, uh... What's, oh, what's that conspiracy moron saying? Alex Jones. If Alex Jones is doing a show, and suddenly he was like, Wow, we're under attack by seahorses! And the entire police force of like Lincoln Nevada decided to go where he was filming his show and stop the giant seahorses look that's insane <laughs> and they all listened to him every single one of them <laughs> well they never miss an episode oh boy they never... <laughs> yeah. well I feel like he never stops airing his radio show either like I feel like that's like a 24 hour thing yeah also a possibility but, folks, that was Eight Legged Freaks. Mm hmm. Giant spiders, David Arquette, lots of. Lots oh, of, don't uh, forget that closing shot with Dougie Doug and his bling grill. Oh, yeah, that's. <laughs> his three gold teeth. Yeah. <laughs> Which he basically acquired from the Agua Mesa Load thing. Yep. Right. And it also makes sense for his character because he still has his government, you know, conspiracy theory thing where, like, if it's in his teeth, obviously. His gold is on him at all times, <laughs> and no one's going to take it from there him. There you go. <laughs> oh, now, having said all that, guys, we're going to take an ad break, so we will be right back. What Were They Thinking is brought to you by HostGator. HostGator is a leading provider of shared, reseller, VPS, and dedicated hosting solutions. Award-winning support is available 24-7, 365 days a year via phone, email, and live chat. Discover why over 9 million websites trust HostGator. Use the coupon code SCHLUCK for 25% off your first purchase. That's SCHLUCK, S-C-H-L-O-C-K, for 25% off your first purchase. What Were They Thinking is brought to you today by GameItAll.com. Whether it's video game news, the latest in music, or movie reviews, GameItAll.com is your one-stop shop for all nerdy talk. Welcome back! Hey, we're back here with uh, Brendan and Nathan just talking about eight-legged freaks. Hey guys, how's it going? Hey, we got Drew up in the chopper there. Drew, what's it looking like out there for traffic? Oh, we have a, a, a pile up on the I-5, but don't worry, people are mostly on fire, so it'll clear up soon. Well, hey, sounds great, just avoid those surface street folks. But, uh... uh Nathan... Uh, yes, Brendan. This is the point in the show where we dim the lights. Uh, yeah, and, uh, move in excessively close to our, uh, microphones. It's almost like we're having intercourse with your ear holes. I, um, I don't feel that, uh, that sort of imagery is required. Especially with the, um... The mouth sounds that we're going to be making. I yeah. am going to puke. <laughs> you uh, so do that. <laughs> Nathan. Nathan. Yeah. Yes, uh, uh, Brandon. It is time for the low haiku. It is. 17 syllables to accurately describe our feelings on eight-legged freaks. Yes. So, Nathan, would you like to begin? I would. Uh, I'd, be, I'd be delighted to my, my fellow host. Okay. Okay. Itsy bitsy freaks. No match for former champion. I miss Dougie Doug. <laughs> very good, very good, very good. <laughs> so, uh, uh, it's, uh, now your turn to, uh, delight us with some syllable and uh, wordplay. Okay. <clears throat> Dave Arquette 
in this. Also, Black Widow is too. There are spiders too. Very, very good. Ooh, oh. Okay. Whew. Got out of that. Well, now that we have read our low haiku, uh, I think the three of us pretty much gave our kind of take on this movie, but, uh, yeah. you know, yeah, what do we say? Well, I think we say... Don't take a word for us! Yeah, don't take our word for it, guys. Although, maybe you should, because I think people might might have been harsher on this than we were. Well, it's it, it, it's really kind of a, a sort of a toss up actually because it's got it's got a forty eight percent on the tomato meter from the critics. I mean, it's like half and half almost. The audience, not so much. They only gave her a thirty two. That's surprising. Yeah. Well, yeah. I I have a feeling that it it, it might combine with when the movie came out as well, because I remember seeing the movie at the time and being like, Ugh, just what. And now I kind of appreciate it as as the kind of send up that it is of like the old monster movies. I'll, I'll, I got I got the first one here uh, okay. from Dennis Lim at the Village Voice. He says, okay. despite nifty FX, first time director Ellery LKM staging is altogether devoid of variation. That's yeah. some uh, interest. Uh, I don't know what the hell that means. <laughs> but you know, on the flip side. Uh, Riley Gaps from the Boston Globe says, as uh, Green Guts monster movies go, it's a beaut. There you go. Look at Had. <laughs> Look at Had. Uh, Drew, would you like to read a little snippet? You know what? Yeah, I, I found one from uh, David Nusire from, and I just had to take it because it's uh, it's real film reviews. Okay. Oh, there you and, go. And uh, it says, Eight Le- <laughs> Eight-Legged Freaks clearly wants to be the gremlins for the 21st century, century, but never quite makes it due to lackluster character development and shaky pacing. You know, I'm not entirely against that one. Yeah. Hey, characters are not the greatest in it. <laughs> That's, pacing is a little off, I'm it, not going to lie. It is. It's definitely slower for a while. Um, yeah, there's there's weird moments that it just have, like... You almost wonder, like, why are you there? Oh, they're trying to be funny with something. It's almost like the the idea of the Im- improvised scenes were hit or miss. Obviously, with Get Away, you eight legged freaks worked, but the moment where he's all like, "Where's the phone? I don't have the phone. You have the phone. Oh yeah, I have the phone. Sorry, I got confused. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> like that. That's when I'm like, why did you leave that in? <laughs> that's not. That's not necessary. <laughs> uh, Richard Roper, uh, formerly of Ebert and Roper. Says, marginally amusing, but I'm giving it thumbs down. Hmm. Well, Steve Newton from the Georgia Strait, uh, delightful Canadian Ge- publication George here. George Strait? No, oh. the Georgia oh, okay, Strait. Okay. Don't be a dick. Uh, what it lacks in scares, however, Eight-Legged Freaks makes up for with gallons of gooey green spider guts. I like it. There was a lot of gooey green spider guts, as Drew mentioned earlier. <laughs> yes, there were. <laughs> um, I got some audience reviews here. Ooh. So these are going to be uh, very well written and uh, articulated. So this one is weird just because of the, fir- uh, the last sentence. So it says, The cast of Eight-Legged Freaks perform well. But the film is neither funny nor scary. Far, far, far too long. It's 99 <laughs> minutes. Yeah. How much? It's, it's pretty it's on par with the, this type of movie. <laughs> yeah. um, I'll read another one because it's quick here. So this next one says, it's just weird. Uh, this one's weird to me. Lame, but not in a good way. What? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> It's a good kind of lame. All right. Uh, uh, Drew, you got anything else? Um, I, I like this one. It says, mindlessly entertaining, uh, entertaining fun with nods to the creative features of the 50s. So, again, it, it's calling back to the idea that the even the poster is re- is resembling them, which, again, I'm pretty sure was on that television set in the kid. Yeah, uh, it bedroom. absolutely was. Yeah. <laughs> uh 
Brandon P is he's all kinds of mean. Uh, the fact that Elroy Elkam has not yet killed himself offends God and mankind. <laughs> you know what? Good grief. That's why would you? That's fucking mean. That's harsh. Hot take. <laughs> Ugh, dumb take. No, no, that's pretty bad. Um, okay, the last, the last few here are very short. So this is the last few audience reviews. Uh, this one just says the spiders talk. What the fuck was that about? <laughs> <laughs> only, only like part of the best, best scenes in the film. <laughs> uh, this one says, th- this one, this person. Um, on Rotten Tomatoes, instead of rating, you can also put, like, want to see or don't want to see. And this mm-hmm. person rated this movie I don't want to see. And they said, I'd be a freak if I ever watched this. Ugh. Oh. oh. Okay, then. Yeah. And then the last one, the last one makes a lot of sense. And I'm going to read it exactly as it's written. And it's all capital letters. Stupid as I get out bulls, LOL. What? What? Stupid? As I get out bulls, LOL. Because Hooked on Phonics learned me to spoke? <laughs> Sounds like it. <laughs> oh, Good I'm grief. using that from now on. This movie was stupid as I get out bulls, LOL. <laughs> At least you didn't find one that was like a, a a Tinder profile or a review for a water park. So, I think, uh, I think then we'll just wrap it up there. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So that was that was eight legged freaks. Those are reviews, and I guess the last, the, well, not the last thing, but the next thing we do is uh, give our opinion, uh, recommendation, sort of, of this movie. So, Drew, since you are our guest, I'll let you go first. So our rating system is as follows: from top to bottom, was this wonderful movie magic in the water? Um, I cannot reach a judgment night, Captain America. Or did this movie make you Nick Furious? I want to say that it's uh, it's it's going to be a top ranking for me because it's so absurdly funny, and it also has wonderful callbacks and shoutouts, you know, to uh, to other films. Like you can you can see the nods to like cinema history as they desperately try to embody what a B horror movie is. Okay. So you're saying basically uh, movie magic in the water. I, I say I say movie magic in the water, um, but it, it's barely making a splash. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hot take. <laughs> uh, Nathan, what do you think? Uh, I'm gonna, I think I'm probably going to say that I, I, I can't reach a judgment night. Okay. So you're you know, someone in the upper echelons, but not quite at the top. Yeah, no, it, it's definitely upgraded, because I remember when I saw it originally, and if I was going by my remembered uh, perception of it, I definitely would have ranked this a Captain of Meh, Rika, mm-hmm. but it's it's definitely moved up a bit in, uh, in, in the way I see it. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm kind of debating between two of them. It's somewhere, like, I cannot reach a judgment night, but eh, you know what? Mm, fuck it, I'm gonna go with movie magic in the water because I, I was so, kind of between those two, and I'm leaning more to movie magic in the water. So I think it's all pretty safe to say that we would all, you know, say it, at least check it out, watch it. Yeah, it's oh, yeah. dumb. It's Definitely. 99 minutes. It's not far, far too long. Uh, but and it is stupid as I get out bulls. Lol. But I mean, it's a good watch. <laughs> and hey, if you if you need another. If, Another reason, October 17th is coming real soon, so, you know, that could help you enjoy it, too. <laughs> Canada reference. Oh, Canada. <laughs> Agreed. Yep. Uh, but, yeah, that was, uh, let's say, like a freaks. And uh, so, real quick, last thing before we get to plugs and thanking our guest. Nathan, in two weeks, we have a very special episode coming up. Yes, we do. Because it is our first ever Patreon pick. Uh, patron Erica Kenner uh, got to pick the movie for us. And good on her. So, Nathan, I'm about to play the clue we both agreed on here. Yes. Uh, so just give me a moment.
There you have it, first ever audio clue. Uh, Drew, once again, tell the good folks again where they can find your podcast. Yeah, you can check us out on, on Twitter at, at RealFeelsPod. Um, Facebook, just search for uh, Real Feels Podcast. Same thing on Instagram. And, uh, or you can just shoot us an email at uh, realfillspodcast at gmail.com. You guys have a RedTube account? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. So wait, that wasn't... So who was I looking... So wait, I found Real Feels. That's not you guys? No, no. Oh, sorry. No, that's... Uh, that is definitely not ours. <laughs> we had to... Uh... Oh, I gave that video so many views. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was doing you guys a favor. Drew, you are... I was doing myself a favor, too, but I mean... <laughs> Drew, you, you are such a good director, based on that video I saw. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Oh, wait, I thought it wasn't that's you! A... That's Real Feels late at night. <laughs> <laughs> Real Feels after dark. <laughs> after dark. It's the Skinamax version. <laughs> Uh, is uh, your your uh, Simeon friend around? Yes, he's Nathan. Just right Nathan, Nathan has to, uh, we we now have to give the floor to Montrose Monkington the third. Ah, hello, it's your good friend Montrose Monkington the third here. And I'm actually uh, pretty glad to be here on this uh, this this podcast, as it were, uh, uh, meeting a new friend, Drew. Hello, Drew. Hello. Yes, it's, are you mocking me? No, no. I don't Tension. necessarily Tension. Tension. Anyhow, um, yes, uh, your good friend Montrose Monkington the Third here, and I just I would like to invite all of you delightful listeners to to take the time to check out my Facebook page, Montrose Monkington the Third Esquire and Friends. Uh, you can also uh, look at my YouTube channel, uh, Montrose Monkington TV. Uh, lots of fun stuff there about you know wrestling and there's some interviews that I do when I meet some interesting people. And you can also follow me on the Twitter bot there, as Brendan called it earlier. Um, yes, at, at, at Montrose the Third, that's the number three RD. And I actually did some live tweeting of a recent WWE event that I was able to go to. Unfortunately, no live videos, but, you know, such as it is, uh, they don't seem to allow those sorts of things at their events. <laughs> thank you. More later. All right, well, thanks, Montrose. Uh, you're, now- you're welcome. I'm always glad to class up the joint. So, of course, you can find us on uh, Twitter Twitter at WWTT Podcast. Same thing for Instagram. Search for us on Facebook. What were they thinking? What were they thinking? Interactive is our Facebook group. Find us on all the podcatchers. Uh, Podbean, iTunes slash Apple Podcasts, whatever it's called. Spotify, Stitcher. We have a Redbubble store, redbubble.com slash people slash WWTT Podcast. Patreon, of course, because that's how somebody got to pick the movie for our next episode. So you can yeah. sign up patreon all kinds of good stuff there early access to episodes bonus episodes uh you can guest host you can pick the movie you can advertise on the show lots of great stuff so sign up patreon.com slash wwtt podcast i think that's gonna uh that's gonna do it for us nathan yes uh after we uh, of course thank drew thank you drew for being our guest Yes, thank you so much yeah, for coming thank, on. Thank you. Yeah, no, this was a hoot. Um, yeah, Nathan, do you do you have any questions? Well, I mean, I guess yeah. I mean, I mean, we're ta- we're, we're talking about a movie that's a it's a, got, got your your small town sheriff that Carrie were, and her her character is clearly supposed to be you know smart. And uh, a strong woman, you know, pulling herself up, do, doing it, making a life for her and her kids without a, a or husband because he's a cheating scumbag. And she that means tells you she's smart. She's so smart that she can get elected as a woman sheriff in a podunk town in Arizona. But she lets her son hang out with uh, a man who's clearly, uh, you know, a spider loving pedophile. I mean, what were you thinking? Thinking. It's time. Let's check our cue, baby. Pair it with a couple of brews, baby. We love your movies. We love the bad ones too. So we watch them all and pass their lessons on to you. Oh yeah. Ban out, ban out, ban out, ban out, ban out, ban out, ban out. Meow.
Everything I learned from movies Helps to make life a little bit groovy With a one life plot holes a gratuitous boobies It's time to get busy with your friend Steven Izzy At eilfm.podbean.com Hey, do you like movies? Hey, do you like podcasts? If you do, then come on down and listen to the Home Video Hustle podcast, homie. Hustle, hustle. Every Friday, we talk about whatever movie PJ picks out the bag. What does that mean? (laughs) Well, every Wednesday on our YouTube page, I pick a bunch of movies at random. Sometimes there's a theme to it, sometimes not. PJ picks the movie out, and guess what? We watch it on Friday. We talk about it for about maybe an hour, hour and a half, whatever we feel like doing. Might need something good to watch, baby. Come on down every Friday. So come get your hustle on with Home Video Hustle. You can find the show on any podcatcher app, or you can come down to homevideohustle.podbean.com. All of them in one place for you. So you can go ahead and binge it like it's Netflix. We ain't the defenders. Uh, but I like to think we a little bit better than that. <laughs> come out at your boys, man. Come chill with us. Peace. Peace. happy to have you with us this evening and want you to enjoy every minute of your stay here. Listen to me. Please listen. If you don't, if you won't, if you fail to understand, then the same incredible terror that's menacing me will strike at you! Are you ready to enter the sci-fi double feature drive-in? Every month we hold a special double feature with a very interesting theme thought up by your host, the conspiracy-loving Elisa, and yours truly, Jarrett the Kaiju Man Wegelin. We discuss giant monsters, little monsters, genetic abominations, robots gone awry, aliens coming to Earth, cryptids, and anything in between. So join us at the sci-fi double feature drive-in podcast every first and third Thursday of the month. And don't forget to stop by our snack bar first. And here is your clue, folks, for, okay, no, no, we're not going to do that? Okay, hold on. (laughs) So much editing for future professionalism. Now I just have to watch a pizza ad. Hang on. (laughs) Satisfy your hunger, the big crave. (laughs) Okay, here we go. All right, here we go. Now let's not press back this time. Perfect. 